Okay, guys, I'm just going to show you how the more basic rules work, right? Uh, here I have four examples, right? These are the more simple rules uh, that you have in logic. Uh, these are the rules you actually need to be able to prove the more complicated rules that we're going to learn in the next few weeks, okay? So if we start up here with the first argument, we have E and R, okay? And we can use a conjunction elimination to eliminate the, the E, right, to get the R, okay? Remember, you have to use conjunction elimination because this is a conjunction, right? You can't use any other rules, right? And it has to be the elimination rule because obviously we're getting rid of the conjunction. Now, here we have, in the next one, we have a conjunction introduction, right? You have two premises, E and R. We know those to be true. Now, if we know that E and R are true, we also know that E and R are true. So we can introduce a conjunction in between E and R, right? And come up with a new claim. And we would cite lines one and lines two. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, this is a disjunction introduction. If you remember, disjunctions are or statements, right? So um or statements have the nice feature that an or statement is always true as long as you know that one part of it is true so you could basically add whatever you like in a disjunction introduction right so let's see how it works we have e right and you can introduce a disjunction with any other uh value here on the other side of the disjunction Right, so in the first example, I'm introducing a disjunction with R, right? So if E then uh, E or R, and um, we can also see here in the next line, I am adding a more complicated part on the other side of the disjunction. Right? Is this is and this is A and if B then C. Right? Um and that's totally fine. We can use a disjunction introduction to add all that. In fact, I could add all this in my disjunction, right? You could put pretty much anything here that you want to, as long as you already know that the other half is true, right? And finally, we have a con conditional elimination, right? And to do a conditional elimination, you need to have a conditional, and you also need to have the antecedent, right? And you need to cite the antecedent and the conditional, and you can derive the consequent from that, right? Um, and this is a really important part in logic. In fact, this is a type of argument, uh, is a valid argument called modus ponens, which is just a conditional elimination, right? So if I say, um, if it rains, then the ground will be wet, it is raining, well, then I know that the ground is going to be wet, right? And I'm eliminating the conditional to show that the ground will be wet. Since I know both if the ground is if rains and the ground is wet and it is rain. So I hope this helps to understand how you apply these more basic logical rules, right? It's a quick overview. You always cite the rule, you always cite the line which the rule is being applied to, and you always make sure that the rule is the one that applies to the particular operation you're doing. Here we're eliminating a conjunction. So this is a conjunction elimination, right? To get R from E and R, you need to be able to eliminate the and. Okay. Now here we have the introduction, right? As long as you know both parts are true, you could introduce a conjunction between them. All right. And down here we have the disjunction, which allows us to basically add an or statement for whatever we want. And finally, here we have the conditional elimination, which allows us to 
basically derive a claim from our conditionals. So I hope that helps to show how you use these basic logical operations. And I hope that you uh, continue to master these over the course.